Hey everybody, it's Mr. N, and we are going to do this next lesson, which is on inequalities in two triangles. So we've got two theorems that we're going to talk about. The first one, uh, most books call it the hinge theorem. Um, here in this book, they call it the side angle side inequality theorem. And here's what it says. If two sides of one triangle, right here and right here, are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angle, so notice this angle is between these two, same thing here, and the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second, then the third side will be larger than this one. So imagine these two are right here, hinged, that's why we call it a hinge theorem, they're hinged. You open up the hinge, you're going to make a bigger angle, as a result you'll make a bigger side. You close the hinge, so right here is what I'm saying, you close this hinge, you make this smaller, so then the side opposite it becomes smaller as well. And the converse of the hinge theorem is just the other way around, and this one, again, this book calls it the side-side-side inequality, but it's really the hinge theorem and the converse of the hinge theorem, where this time we are looking at the sides. If this angle, if this side is congruent to that side, so two sides of one congruent to two sides of another, but the third side is bigger, then this angle will be larger than that one. So C will be bigger than F, since AB is bigger than DE. You can take a look at this website. This is a great one here. It's a GeoGebra site that shows you how this works. So that's perfect for you guys to understand that. All right, right now let's take a look at some examples. Um, let me show you these and we'll do them together. All right, so let's take a look. We're just going to do a few examples to finalize this lesson off. Okay, it says, what can you deduce? Name the theorem that supports your answer. So we are going to take a look at this first one. And here, this is congruent and these sides are congruent. This angle is 60, that angle is 62. So that means SV is going to be larger than PR. Okay, for the next one, take a look. These are both 6. This is 6. That's 7. However, this is the same for both of them. So here's what we look for. Since this is the same for both of them, so this is congruent to both on the triangles and this one to this one. So there's how we separate out our hinge theorem, but this will be the converse. This one was the hinge and this one will be a converse because we're dealing with sides. Now I take a look at it, and I can deduce that this angle is larger than that angle. So angle NMO is going to be bigger than angle um, LMO. And that's because this side was larger when I compared the two triangles. Over here, I'm comparing... Um, two sides where these are the same and then PR they're telling me is less than SQ since PR is less than SQ let's separate out the triangles this is SQ and this is P right there and then the other one like this where this is R Q and P, and I know that this piece is congruent to itself, and then I know that PR, this one, is smaller than SQ, that one, since this is the bigger side, and I'm told that this is the same as, I should have, I should have uh, labeled these two as well, um, right here. That means angle P will be greater, this angle P will be greater than angle Q. Okay, moving on, let's finish these off. Uh, compare each one over here on this first one. The measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2, well, this is 10, that's 10. And since they both share this side, this is 7.2, that's 7, so that means angle 2 is going to be larger. On the next one, they both share this, right? And then that's congruent, so this is larger, so that means DC will be bigger. 
And finally, on this one, when we compare them, these are the same over here. So I'm comparing the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. Since 7 is a bigger side, that's going to be a larger angle than this one. But that means if that's a larger angle, then these have to be, angle 2 has to be smaller. Oops, let me fix that. Angle 2 has to be smaller than angle 1 because, again, this is a bigger angle than this one right here, which means these end up being smaller right in here, angle 2, than whatever angle 1 would have been. All right, so it was a quick lesson today. Hopefully that sinks in. Hopefully it's not too bad. The hinge theorem and the converse of the hinge theorem. So thanks for watching. Hit that like, subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.